Here's one. And if, look, if you're not impressed yet with what we can do technically, this is a comet that we landed a spaceship on, a moving comet. The spaceship's called Rosetta, right? I mean, can you imagine? How is that possible? This thing's the size of a washing machine, and we lined it up with a moving comet to study this thing, and it's sending information back to us, right? Not impressed yet? What about Voyager 1? Voyager 1 just left the freaking solar system. You got me? Okay? It left. It's gone. It's leaving the solar system, and we are communicating with it while it's doing that. And we, we can't solve the problems of vertebral subluxation. <laughs> Give me a break, right? And here's one more, if that's not enough for you, right? Here we go. Asteroid RQ-36. We haven't landed on it yet, but we're building the rocket and making the plans to do it, right? This is an asteroid that we're going to land on. Why are we going to land on this asteroid? Well, because this asteroid is in an Earth trajectory and may hit us in 2091. Okay. Anybody here going to be alive in 2091? Anybody on this planet that's alive right now going to be alive in 2091? No. And why? The Dark Lord is going to be alive. <laughs> then why are we going to this asteroid? Because we need to figure out if it is going to hit us, what it's made of, and how we can stop it from hitting us. Okay? And, and you know, the, the, we had to figure out, and I'm not going to get this right, but we had to figure out this thing's orbit. And in order to do that, we had to figure out this thing called the Yarkovsky effect. And the Yarkovsky effect has something to do with when the sunlight hits this asteroid, how this sunlight affects this thing's orbit around the sun. Well, the Yarkovsky effect is less than an ounce, and we measured it, you understand, from an asteroid that's out there in deep space, so that maybe we can stop this thing from hitting us in 2091. You know, that's some long-term planning for you, right? What is our profession doing? What's the long-term planning of this profession? Have a seat at the table. Change them from within. Continue to feed the cartel and the control that this cartel has. Continue to compromise with these people that are destroying the profession. Continue to give in to them. Continue to give... Oh, I had somebody, tell, a president of a chiropractic college tell me not too long ago, well, you've got to give a little to get a little. No, I don't. And we know we shouldn't, right? We need some drastic change in this profession. And I got some news for the, the young crowd in this profession. Because at this point, I'm an old timer, right? How much time do I really have left to affect change in this profession? For, for seriously, right? Understand that the burdens that I'm talking about are on you. Because during the Mercedes 80s, when all this stuff could have been dealt with, what were all the chiropractic leaders doing? Getting drunk off easy insurance money. That's what they were doing, right? And now we wake up, it's like the night after a big frat party, right? We walk in, you're like, what the hell happened here? What are you guys doing? Pink flamingos and the lawn and everything, right? Katy Perry singing. <laughs> Long-term planning. One of my uh, chiropractic heroes, or Fred, it was Fred Barge, is still Fred Barge. I, I, ha I had the distinct pleasure, you know, and I know there's probably people around here who met BJ and, you know, spent time with him, and, but I didn't get to do that. I did get to spend a little time with Fred and smoke a few cigars and have a few libations. And I don't know, if, you've never, if you didn't have the opportunity to do that, I got to tell you, it's one, some of the greatest memories of my life. 
And Fred gave me some advice even when I, I, I spent a couple of years in Russia and he talked to me about mission trips and his opinion about those kind of things as well. So I got a lot of good advice from Fred. You know, he said, a great profession can only be sustained through the authentic transmission of its principles from generation to generation. How true of a statement is that? Fred also said something else. You know, the title of the slide here, War Horses. He wrote an article. He said, where are the new war horses, right? These horses that are trained for battle. Where are they in the chiropractic profession? Are they up and coming in the ranks? I got to tell you something. I, I really hope and I pray that the new war horses are right here in this room in Colorado, a mile high this weekend. Thank you. Good night. Have a great weekend. Love and appreciate all of you.